a lot of time and work went into this video. While being fairly late to the party, today I'll be testing the absurd copy of an Intel CPU. The funny thing about it is that Intel are copying themselves and have now essentially released their i9-13900K a second time under a new name. My friends, this is about the infamous Intel Core i9-14900K. In reviews by all kinds of media outlets, there was a ton of criticism surrounding it. But are they right about it? Now I've been going back and forth whether or not I should skip the 14900K review, but for the sake of completeness, I decided to share my test results with you. Today I will not only be showing you the differences between the 14900K and 13900K, but will also do benchmarks on raw performance, gaming performance, temperatures and power consumption. Also how do various AMD Ryzen CPUs fare against this CPU? Price. In February of 2024, the 14900K retails for about 540 to 570 US dollars. In contrast, its direct predecessor 13900K costs almost the same amount at 520 to 570 dollars, while the competing AMD 7950X 3D comes in at a higher MSRP, but in reality can be had for roughly 600 to 630 dollars. So AMD is the slightly more expensive solution in the US, whereas in Europe it's the other way around. Architecture. I'll keep it short, nothing much has changed really. We are just talking about a Raptor Lake refresh. The manufacturing process is still at 10 nanometers. In summary, one could say that the 14900K is a factory overclocked 13900K. This is also clearly visible when taking a look at the specifications. On paper, we see a jump of 200 MHz on the base clock, with the boost clock seeing an increase of 1 to 200 MHz, with the absolute maximum achievable boost clock supposedly being an identical 5.8 GHz. However, I find it interesting that despite increasing clock speeds, Intel sticks to their unchanged power limit of 253 watts, which in theory suggests that today's 14900K should hardly consume more power than a 13900K. Test setup. Raptor Lake Refresh does not require a new socket or chipset. Existing 600 and 700 series chipsets are usually compatible with 14th gen CPUs after a BIOS update. So I went with my usual ASRock Z790 Tai Chi motherboard, chose the Kingston Fury Beast RGB DDR5 RAM with 32GB and 6000MHz, then I went with the Be Quiet Pure Loop 2 FX 360mm AIO liquid cooler for all CPUs involved in the test, and as for the GPU, I went with the ASUS RX 7900XTX. Clock speeds. At full load, a difference between predecessor and successor can actually be measured. The peak cores of the 14900K on average clock around 100 to 200 MHz higher than those of the 13900K, sometimes even a little more than that, sometimes less. The same seems to apply to the E cores. The max boost clock on the 14900K for the P core is 6 GHz, which already exceeds Intel's official spec by 200 MHz. In contrast, the 13900K visibly drops behind with only a max of 5.5 GHz. When it comes to E-Cores, the refresh model sees a 100 MHz advantage. Differences in clock speeds can also be measured in-game, even if they are minimal at times, but let's see whether or not this leads to any performance gains, and if so, by how much. And so we now move on to the benchmarks. Performance, productivity. Kicking things off with Cinebench 2024. In the multi-core test, the new 14900K leads the pack, is nearly 3% ahead of its predecessor 13900K and also 7% ahead of AMD's 7950X 3D. The regular 7950X without 3D vCache should and will usually position itself slightly ahead of the 3D model in productive use cases. With the 14900K, Intel achieved an almost 4% lead over the 13900K in this single core test, the 7950X 3D lagging behind by nearly 17%. 7 zip benchmark. This is where AMD CPUs are known to shine. A 14900K being 3-4% faster than its predecessor, but 6% slower than its AMD counterpart. V-Ray 6 benchmark. 
Here too, AMD remains in the lead. The 13900K and 14900K perform roughly the same, while a 7950X 3D brings almost 5% more performance to the table. Moving on to the Corona 10 benchmark, the regular 7950X noticeably distances itself from the rest. 13 and 14900K again perform roughly the same, the 7950X 3D doing about 1 or 2% better, which is negligible. Blender Open Data The comparable AMD CPUs remain at the top. The new 14900K at least is 2% faster than the 13900K, while a 7950X 3D does nearly 5% better, the 7950X only distancing itself further. Handbrake Video Encoding Intel finally achieves another win in one of these productivity benchmarks. The 14900K is marginally faster than its predecessor, though the 7950X 3D drops behind by 6%. As far as video rendering with the Vegas Pro 21 is concerned, the 14900K is around 3% faster than its predecessor and almost 4% quicker than a 7950X 3D. The only exception being the 7950X that still comes out on top. Gaming Borderlands 3 Surprisingly, the slightly higher clock speed seen on the 14900K over the 13900K becomes noticeable because we are able to report an FPS increase of 4% at 1080p, even those 1% lows see an increase. Nevertheless, a 7950X 3D clearly goes to show what the use of that 3D vCache leads to, namely a 13% win over Intel's 14900K, and 1% lows that would be even 15%. Cyberpunk 2077 here we report almost no difference between 13th and 14th gen. Slightly higher lows can be measured, but that's about it. In contrast, the comparable 7950X 3D surprisingly lags behind by 2%, but delivers 6% better lows. However, AMD's fastest 8-core 7800X 3D undoubtedly takes the win, proof that too many cores in this game title can indeed slow things down. Far Cry 6 now Intel clearly wins the race. The 14900K has a 3% advantage over the 13900K and a respectable 13% over the 7950X 3D. The non-X 3D chips on the other hand drop behind by a lot more than that. Horizon Zero Dawn Now the tables are turned again. From old to new at Intel, we see an improvement of 2%. But compared to the 14900K, the 7950X 3D delivers an about 20% higher frame rate, along with an impressive 26% gain in the low department. Forza Horizon 5. This time there is only a measurable jump of over 1% to be measured between 13 and 14900K, although that 1440p test result does stand out quite nicely here. In the 1080p test though, a 7950X 3D takes the lead by 3%, which is not much, but still. Metro Exodus leaves us a bit of a chaos really shaking up the chart today. Between the 13th and 14th gen, there is once again only a little over a 1% performance increase witnessable. However, compared to that, a 7950X 3D now falls behind by 6%. Only the 7800X 3D, once again with its 8 extremely fast cache-tuned cores, manages a 5% lead over the Core i9. Red Dead Redemption 2. Intel's predecessor and successor are barely separated here. To be fair, AMD is only 3% ahead with their 7950X 3D. The minimum results ended up almost identical. In the slightly older title, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 13900K climbs to the number one spot, but only by a very small margin. Actually, all these top of the line CPUs are neck and neck here. Having arrived in the final title for today, Assassin's Creed Mirage, we see a pretty uniform picture. It becomes clear that this is more of a GPU-centered game, as CPUs with modern architectures perform roughly the same. Any differences measured here can be seen as a margin of error. Gaming average FPS. Say what you want, but on average, the 14900K actually achieves about a 1% FPS gain over the 13900K. That doesn't particularly sound like a lot, and quite frankly, it's not. As 41% lows, at least we are talking of 3%. On average, 
the 7950X 3D is ahead by yet another 1.5% compared to the 14900K. Realistically though, we are talking about such marginal differences that aren't really noticeable most of the time and most certainly not as soon as the resolution is increased. But it is important to determine the theoretical performance gain, power consumption and temperatures. This is where things actually get much more exciting. As initially assumed, the unchanged official TDP of 253 watts, seen across 13 and 14900K, hardly makes a measurable difference in power consumption. With my testing configuration, the successor roughly only draws 1% more power from the wall, whereas the idle power draw is 3% lower. It becomes clear that this is practically the same CPU, just with minor factory optimizations. Unfortunately, this also means that there are no improvements in efficiency compared to those fairly power efficient AMD Ryzen CPUs, especially not in comparison to those X3D models, which are even significantly more power efficient than those regular X CPUs. A 14900K consumes about 25% more power at full load as opposed to the regular 7950X and a whopping 71% more than a 7950X 3D. So there is a need for optimization. However, things don't look perfect for AMD either because in some cases, the idle power draw between 14900K and 7950X 3D can end up like 20% higher with the AMD CPU. I would therefore like to see greater focus on power consumption from both manufacturers. Intel lacks efficiency at higher loads, whereas AMD lacks efficiency at low loads. Fortunately, the difference in power draw while gaming isn't quite as extreme. Nonetheless, due to the higher clock speeds, the 14900K draws around 2% more than the 13900K and 21% more than a 7950X 3D by AMD. In my case, in absolute terms, this corresponds to 114 watts more from the wall when gaming with Intel. When it comes to temperatures, both 13900K and 14900K now settle at a maximum of 90 degrees Celsius, so they don't pose a problem with a 360mm AIO liquid cooler. The 7950X 3D running at 78 degrees, the regular 7950X at 91. All CPUs tested here are within the specified limits, so none of the chips were throttling at any point. However, before we get to the summary, I would like to point out that Intel provides a rather strange yet interesting form of optimization for their 14th gen CPUs. We are talking of the so-called Intel application optimization, or as it is popularly abbreviated, APO. With this kind of optimization enabled, we should be able to see a noteworthy gain in gaming performance. To get it up and running, however, you must first enable the Intel Dynamic Tuning Technology feature within the BIOS. Following that, you'll have to make your way into the Microsoft Store and download Set Optimization App. If all drivers have been installed and everything within the BIOS has properly been enabled, the app should not spit out any error messages. By enabling the feature, we can now let the app perform its magic. In Metro Exodus, I achieved a remarkable FPS increase of 9% and 15% when it comes to the lows. The catch here being that even after months, the optimization app still doesn't seem to have matured a bit and the only game supported of my gaming parkour was Metro Exodus. Many other reviewers and customers can confirm and report similar things and I personally think that's a real shame. Conclusion. So basically, you could describe the 14900K as a laughable, absurd, yet good copy of the 13900K. Whether it really made that much sense for Intel to release the CPU is questionable, especially with a new 14th generation being advertised to consumers. So it at least to me seems as if they, Intel, want to deceive the market and its customers. Maybe they aim to create the impression you are getting something new here and had to release a new product without actually having a new product ready. Nonetheless, small performance gains due to this small increase in clock speed and productive areas and in games are measurable even if they are only very small. In reality, hardly making a difference. 
in general, the performance of the i9-14900K is very good. And in productivity workloads, we are within the same performance tier AMD's 7950X 3D is part of. Depending on the application, it's either AMD that's ahead or Intel. And similar things can also be said about the gaming performance. So in the end, it will hardly make a difference for the user whether a 7950X 3D, 14900K or maybe even a 13900K is installed in their system. There's also hardly any noteworthy difference in pricing, although motherboard prices also have to be taken into account when purchasing a whole new platform. Where I currently see a bit of a problem with Intel CPUs is the power consumption. With CPUs from Team Blue, the power draw is not only significantly higher in productive workloads, but also in gaming loads, despite pretty much getting very comparable results that for the most part only can be measured but not felt. Of course, from a purely theoretical point of view, we could do some manual undervolting and optimizations with those Intel CPUs, then again, same applies for AMD. Although it should be noted that those X3D models are already pretty close to as efficient as they possibly can be right out of the box. The higher power draw on the Intel side of things might be the only real drawback I see right now, even though AMD does occasionally show very noticeable weaknesses at idle. The efficiency could have been better with both manufacturers if you ask me. In some cases, of course, it also depends on the motherboard you're using. Long story short, no matter how unnecessary the release of the 14900K may be, I can without a doubt recommend the CPU, just like the 13900K despite the shortcomings mentioned. However, I would not speak of a clear winner between the 14900K and 7950X 3D. And these have been my opinions, so now I'm interested in finding out what your thoughts are on this. Do you see it the way I do, or do your thoughts differ? If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like. If not, feel free to make use of that dislike button. With that said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.